This interview is with Sandra Shearer of Lancaster, Texas. Sandra is a former resident of the colony and is presently serving as a director of the Municipal Utility District and is the president of the board. My name is George Gillette. I am an interviewer for the Colony Public Library Video Oral History Project. Sandra, we're holding this interview in the boardroom of the Municipal Utility District since you are president of the board and you have a meeting scheduled a little bit later on this evening. So we'll try to make this smooth and fast so you can get on with the meeting. But would you tell us your name and something about your background, such as where and when you were born, where you grew up, places you've lived, uh, your educational background, or any specialized training you had, anything like that? My name is Sandra Shear Whitworth. I was born in Dallas, Texas. We won't talk about the year. I grew up mostly in Fort Worth. I graduated from high school in Fort Worth and I went to the University of Texas at Austin. Where I met my first husband and we married and moved to Midland, Texas where we lived for two years. And then he went to work for Texas Instruments and we moved to Dallas. Not actually Dallas, we moved to Carrollton where we lived for 10 years before moving to the colony. And so then I've got two children, 21 and 15. Okay. What is your occupation there? Okay, I'm a secretary of the Superintendent of Schools in Austin. When you moved to the colony, uh, what prompted you to come out here? Well, we were looking for a larger home. And at the time, I think was, there was 12 miles difference between Carrollton and Colony, and that 12 miles amounted to $12,000 because it was an unincorporated area and people, you know, land was cheaper. So the four homes were cheaper for the same home, same building, larger lot different. Okay, um, you have been quite active in various aspects of the, the affairs of the Colony over the time that you lived here, what are some of the things that you have done in the community and approximately when you did those things? Okay, well, when we first moved out here, that was in 76, I worked with the PTA. Of course, there were no schools in the college at that time. It was in Louisville and I worked with the Louisville Council of PTAs. And that's mainly what I did before the incorporation of the colony. And after that, I launched dives. King is a society, a group that came along with bluebirds. <laughs> when did you really become active? I know at one point you were on the city council. When did you really become active in that type of thing? It was when the city was incorporated. That was in January of uh, 77. And then shortly after that, I had some friends who had friends running for office and they, you know, kind of got me involved in it. And I got to thinking about it and I thought, I could do something like that. So that's when I got involved. I don't believe you were directly involved with the old homeowners association, were you? No. Were you, was it active while you were here? Did, did, you, did you observe any of its activities? Um, I, Yes, it was active. They had, uh, I think, meetings once a week, maybe twice, I'm not sure. They only had street parties and things like that. And they were the ones that, you know, they were responsible for the incorporation. In the first election, Susan Wolferson, who was president of the Homeowners Association at that time, was the election judge. What um, would you say were some of the main concerns? that you as a citizen and the other citizens around you had in those early days before incorporation? We had a volunteer fire department. The only police protection we had was Benton County Sheriff's Office. There were loose dogs running around. Nobody, there were, you know, no ordinances or anything. You know, we were just out here in the country. We were growing around 3,000 people at the time. 
We just need to play because we were growing rapidly. We're playing in any type place. These then were, were probably the, the basic reasons mm -hmm. behind the zoning, like the housekeeping rooms, like leash laws and things like that. Well, were there any other options to incorporation? Could you become part of another city or anything like that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. You know, you couldn't be in Frisco or even in Lewis. Okay. What do you recall as the background of the choice of a name? Probably after we incorporated at the election, we had a little, I guess you'd call a straw vote about the first fire station. And there were different names submitted the Colony, the Colony Hills, and on the, what was it, on the, on the lake, Colony of the, on the Lake, or something like that. And, uh, people just voted, and everyone voted just to keep the name of the colony that Dave Fox, you know, gave the name. It was his house in addition. That was the name that Fox and Jacobs used in marketing. Mm -hmm. in marketing the area, the area. I'm sure. You commented on the straw vote at the old fire station. I'd like to pick up on a couple of things there. First, were there any any kind of places for a group to meet? Was there any kind of civic uh, center of, of any kind at that time? No. There was the fire station. In order to meet in the fire station, you had to move all the fire equipment out. I mean, there was nothing when I moved here. Stop and Go opened the week I moved here, and that was in January '76, and that was. Okay. Why did you decide, I think you touched on this, but why did you decide to go ahead and run for the council? Well, I had friends, like I said, that were involved, you know, active in homeowners, and they would tell me these bits and pieces, and I thought, well, I could do just as job, good a job as some, you know, Joe Blow over here, because then I, mean, I cared about my community, and I had been involved in Carrollton and a lot of things, with Little League and things like that. So I felt like I could do a good, if not better job than some of the other kids. So I signed on. Well, in retrospect, are you glad you did? Yes, I am. Really. Because it was exciting. I mean, a new community. Give me a lot of experience. What are some of the, some of the issues that you can recall that came before the council while you were serving? <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, one, several stick in my mind. One of them was the leash law. I wrote the ordinance. And uh, in the ordinance, you couldn't let your cats run free. <laughs> and Bill Longo, who had been a candidate for city council and laws, was not very happy. I remember he standing on a chair. We did make it was a church that opened up after, I guess, right about the time city corporate. I forgot about that. And we were meeting in the church. Time. And he stood on a chair and said, it's not the nature of the beast. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then we wanted to buy a, a building, a modular building that was used to use for a city hall because, like I said, there was nothing here. It was stop and go, and I think there was a doctor's office next door to stop and go. And he had moved down. And after he moved down, he went into that building. Anyway, there was just no place to meet. And it was a very small office there next to the stop and go. So I remember we went over off Preston Road somewhere to look at this thing. And we came back. We just thought it was the greatest idea. I think it was $12,000. We thought it was a great buy. And uh, the citizens just raised kind because we were going to have to go in debt. Well, I think it was probably on 12. You no, know, that's not 20, probably 20, 25,000. We were going to have to go in debt. And they didn't want to go in debt for a city hall. So we didn't buy it because they raised such a ruckus. And then as we grew, people came to meetings all the time. I mean, people were involved in their community the first year. And 
we hired a police chief, and uh, one hot issue was when we hired a police chief. <laughs> he had made quite a few friends, and they didn't understand it. There's a lot of things that you know you have like to watch and you know, they didn't understand. It. We didn't but that was a really, and the car wash was only for a car wash. I think that was one of my colleagues. Um, did you ever get involved in the things that came along a bit later, like whether or not to make sure that all the buildings had brick on the outside or anything like that? No. After I got city council, I just kind of let them handle it. It was hard to, for me to sit on the other side of the table without wanting to say I or no. It was. I went. I, I think I went to one or two meetings, and it was very difficult right at first not to just voice your own opinion. <laughs> well, with your experience there, then uh, you, in time, turned to possibility of serving on the mud board. Um, I don't recall, were you appointed or elected? Um, yeah. You were elected. Uh, what, why did you decide to uh, well, seek that? I, I was on the city council for three years and my term was expiring. And I was going to stay home and watch Monday night football for change rather than be at city council next to one o'clock every Monday night. And I had a friend and he said, Sandy, you have got to run for the board. He said, look at the candidates. They said, you don't want them on there. He said, you know, that place runs smooth and without hassle, and they'll get on there and it'll just be a mess. So at 5 o'clock on the last day of file, he called me to come hang up here. And I said, I'll run if you'll run. So we both ran. And we both got elected. <laughs> I'd like to back up to something on your time on the council you just alluded to. You mentioned some of the one o'clock meetings. Um, could you uh, discuss a little bit what's what the nature of some of those meetings and why they ran so long? Oh, it's because, well, I'm from Texas. And in Texas, they do things a little different than they do up north. And I think up north they have town meetings. I've never lived there, so but that's the impression I've got through the years. To where everyone gets to say his piece. And that's what would happen. We would be sitting at a table trying to discuss something, and everyone in the audience, citizens, you know, wanted to say their piece about it. And like I said, during the first couple of years, I mean, people came to the meetings. And it was difficult. I mean, you're elected to serve the people. You want their opinions. But at the same time, when they keep going over the same thing, saying the same thing, it just drags on and on and on. And it, you know, it makes your meetings last longer. And then there were so many things that we were getting into that we didn't know because no one had been on the council before. The first year, there were a lot of personality problems. We had, oh, could go back. We had a mayor resign. We had two councilmen resign. And one of them, in fact, knew he was going to resign when he took the oath of office. So, you know, there was a lot of turmoil there that never seemed to say, that. we seemed to keep putting out forest fires. That's why we were meeting so long. There was always something going on. Okay, in your uh, transition then, Two serving on the mud board, municipal utility district board. What uh, what are some of the things that you have faced and that you can talk about at this point? You are facing now uh, in the, the continuing growth of the common. Planning for the future and trying to keep the taxes as low as you can. I mean, you've got to put, you can't build with that water and sewage, and it takes money to get water and sewage. And it took us $8 million to bring down this water to the common. 
in our sewage treatment plant. I know your soaps going to need to be enlarged. Could you give just a very brief outline of what was involved in bringing the Dallas water okay. and why we did it? Okay, Grant, this was something, you know, I'd like to take credit for, but I didn't do it. When this municipal utility district was formed, they started working on Dallas water thing. The city of uh, Dallas had a seat on the city farmers branch. Uh, Dallas went up on the water rights without saying anything to anybody. They just said, here's your high water rights, take it or leave it. The city of farmers branch decided not to take it. Dallas went up there and changed it. This is, I remember this when I was living in Carrollton. And uh, the city of Dallas chained up the water meters, you know, where they got the water, where they couldn't get any water. Farmers Branch cut the chain. And that, then they went to court over it. And it took until uh, about two years ago to settle the lawsuit. And until that time, Dallas would not take on any new customers. But all this time, see, the, the utility district has been in touch with Dallas, you know, laying the groundwork for it. And Dallas said, whenever we get this settled, you know, we're willing to serve you because that's what they're doing for. They make their plans to serve people well in advance. And let's see. I said I was on the board when we you know when we signed the contract with Dallas. And we sold the had the bond election, so the bond construction problems and didn't get the water here as quick as we wanted it, but we got to make it. All right, looking back over your time in the colony, both as a private citizen and as a council member and your other activities, how do you, do you look back on the Fox and Jacobs support of the community as a newly incorporated city? I like Fox and Jacobs gave us as much support as they could. They were fair. They paid the the light bills for the street lights for I think two years. It might not seem like much money, but you take uh, fifty thousand dollars here, fifty thousand dollars there. And that's a lot of money for a company as large as Fox and Jacobs to keep putting out. Because you can check the lighting for the city's budget to see how much it is now. Do you think that they initially wanted incorporation? Did they anticipate keeping it as an unincorporated rural area? Or yeah, I really don't know. I don't know if it just if it just mushroomed more than what they expected, or if Dave Fox is dream came true. I think he came out here to us. Well, over the years and months and years that you've been involved with the college, what do you feel is your most significant contribution? I never had all of that contribution that I thought to make. I always try to, you know, to be open and honest with the citizens, just, you know, to let them know what was happening. I always felt like I, you know, I tell them the truth about something. If I ask, you know, I'd let them know. It was keeping them informed. Do you, uh, and thinking back over what we've talked about, can you think of anything else that, any particular memory that comes to mind, anything that might have happened in the colony while you were here that we haven't really discussed that you think would be an interesting addition to our history? I don't know, just the changeover of the council members to me. You know, but the last year, I was the only one left in the colony that was on the original council. The first mayor was on, like in January. And we already had two council members that had resigned prior to that. And then you get to the second city council, or I believe one of them resigned from that. 
everything that is always rich in the council members that sang life. It never seemed to work. Back in those days, as a group, I think the first one did after everybody was saying everybody came in, I think we worked as a group. But after that, the two years after that, when I was on the council, I don't really think they worked as a group. But I think as we're growing now, people are less likely to get involved. And they just sit back and let, let them handle it until something goes wrong. <laughs> but I think that's, you know, the trend. Right, again, you alluded to something a minute ago, and we had not picked up on it earlier. You did serve on the first council that was formed. That was when I think there was 11 or 12 people on the ballot, and the top five vote getters were elected, and we drew from a hat to see who had a one year term and who had a two year term. I've never been lucky at Gamway. I drew a one year term, and I ran for re election. Well, since you no longer reside in the colony as in a sense I won't exactly say an outsider because you're not you do still have interest here but from a bit more of a distance what do you see now as what is going on in the colony uh, what kind of an impression do you have as we continue to grow Like right now, we're not seeing the forest for the trees. <laughs> Could you expand on that a little bit? Okay, well, I think it's going to get to the point that we want. But I just don't think that they're looking to that point. You know, you need to decide how, like right now, we're landlocked. I think maybe we should plan for, for that. To say what are our plans going to be. You know, we need industry and business. You can't, a big community cannot survive without high taxes. You know, <laughs> no, we don't want high taxes. So I think we need to make contingency plans to see all the alternatives to the future. I don't really think that's being done. I think we're going to have to look at the whole picture. There's going to have to be more communication between the city and the Mid district. You had already ended your term on the council when the controversy with Frisco over annexation began to take place. Had you not, or were you still on oh. the council? Well, we've always fought Frisco over annexation. Uh, but the big one, though. No. I wasn't on the council and I was on the board before. We bring it with us and bring it back in the Well, I'd like to give you one more uh, chance to summarize a bit if there's anything else you'd like to. I just, you know, it's hard to look back over all these years. Maybe you never saw it. You know, if I miss this, I'll say the first. The first few years were fun. It was hard work and a lot of bad feelings at times. You make friends, you lose some. But I enjoyed it. You know, I like to think I could keep it a little bit. Nothing else but leash <laughs> law. <laughs> All right, well, Sandra, we'd like to thank you for taking well, part in you. this. You are a continuing member of the city as, as we develop. We appreciate your memories. Thank you.